Tonight, a shaken but defiant George Bush returns to Washington to address the nation. These acts of mass murder were intended to frighten our nation into chaos and retreat. But they have failed. Our country is strong. A great people has been moved to defend a great nation. It was nearly 12 hours earlier, 8.55 a.m., when the first plane hits, carving a gaping hole in the first tower of the World Trade Center. The hijackers apparently armed only with knives. Ten minutes later, 9.05 a.m. Eastern, this nightmare scene, a second hijacked passenger plane targets and slams into the other tower. Oh my God! Slicing through the building at the beginning of the workday. In the streets of New York, pandemonium as thousands, those who still can, scramble to get out, to get away. We heard a big bang, and then we saw smoke coming out, and everybody started running out, and we saw the plane on the other side of the building, and there was smoke everywhere, and people were jumping out the windows. But the terror isn't over. Two more American passenger jets hijacked, one of them crashing in Pennsylvania, the other driven full speed into the heart of America's military. 9.45 a.m., 45 minutes after the first attack in New York, a big chunk of the Pentagon reduced to rubble and flame. In New York, the unthinkable gets worse. The World Trade Center collapses in on itself. 10 a.m., the South Tower is the first to go. A half hour after that, 10.30, the North Tower gives way. The very symbol of American capitalism, gone from the New York skyline. Dr. Mark Heath was there armed with a medical bag and a video camera. I hope I live. I hope I live. It's coming down on me. Here it comes. I'm getting behind a car. In Washington, the White House, the Congress, all government buildings evacuated as the president puts the military on high alert and grounds all commercial air traffic until at least Wednesday at noon. In Afghanistan, the Taliban rulers deny the man they've been harboring, Osama bin Laden, was behind the attacks. But U.S. officials believe he is suspect number one. I would tell you up front, I have no intentions of discussing today what comes next. But make no mistake about it, your armed forces are ready. We will make no distinction between the terrorists who committed these acts and those who harbored them. And the casualties undoubtedly in the thousands, perhaps even in the tens of thousands, not just an act of terror, say more and more U.S. lawmakers here, this was an act of war. Lloyd. Adam, what are the lawmakers saying tonight to reassure the American people that uh, they can get up and possibly continue uh, somewhat normal activities tomorrow? Well, Lloyd, everybody from the president on down anxious to send the message that this is not a country that's going to be brought to its knees, not a nation that is under siege. Uh, the president announcing tonight that the business of the uh, United States government, which was shut down uh, today, is going to start reopening tonight for essential personnel and will be open tomorrow morning for business as usual. Alan, thank you very much. CTV's Alan Fryer in Washington. This is not the first time New York has been a target of a terrorist attack. The World Trade Center itself was bombed in 1995, but even that was nothing compared to the scene today. New Yorkers' legendary toughness was put to the test like never before, with a tragedy that has touched countless lives. CTV's Jed Kahane is in New York. Jed? Lloyd, tonight rescue crews are battling to get close enough to ground zero to begin the search for survivors and begin the grim task of recovering the dead. It looked like a war zone, and for the people of New York, that's exactly what it was, a city under siege. As the World Trade Center towers crumbled to the ground, terrified crowds tried to scramble to safety. Clip three. When the towers collapsed, the lucky ones were simply grateful to be alive. Uh, I got trapped in there when another guy crawled out, kept getting hit in the head, hit bags all around, finally we clawed our way out over the rubble. Yeah. Come on, Dan. All right. All right. So I was real lucky. I don't know what happened to the people behind me when that blast occurred. Not everyone was so fortunate. Before the towers came tumbling down, people trapped inside could be seen waving out of windows dozens of stories up. Some people were forced to jump. 
There's people jumping out of windows. I've seen at least 14 people jumping out of windows. It's, it's, it's horrific. I can't believe this is happening. For those on the ground, the sheer terror of what they witnessed was hard enough to handle. They saw the plane hit the building. I can't say anything. Footage from inside the fallen buildings show that where once stood the twin 110-story towers, there remains little more than soot and rubble. With flights canceled and thoroughfares closed, people poured out of Manhattan on foot, hoping to escape the danger. This is a horrible attack, and one that uh, is despicable and uh, really unthinkable in its magnitude. We will get through this. New York officials say it may be days before the number of dead and injured is known. It will take much longer than that for the people of New York to recover from today's horrors. There is anguish here, but also growing anger and calls for swift and deadly retaliation against whoever is responsible for what many here are terming a demonic attack. But the mayor of New York City is calling on people to keep their emotions in check and focus instead on cleaning up their city and caring for those whose lives have been devastated. Lloyd? Thank you, Jed. CTV's Jed Kahane covering the story for us in New York City. Another terrorist attack was apparently foiled in Pennsylvania. That is where a United Airlines flight crashed, apparently after a gunman stormed the cockpit. There is evidence a hijacker attempted to divert the jetliner to strike a U.S. government target. But as CTV's Peter Murphy reports, investigators are only beginning to piece together the final minutes aboard United Airlines Flight 93. Peter? Lloyd, it's an eerie scene here tonight in the Pennsylvania countryside as huge lights illuminate the crash scene. When emergency crews first arrived here this morning, what they found was devastation. Debris from Flight 93 smoldered in a meadow 130 kilometers southeast of Pittsburgh. Eyewitnesses said they heard an explosion as the jetliner plummeted from the sky. It went straight down and it crashed and I seen uh, the smoke and the flames come up and it was terrible. The flight originated in Newark, New Jersey, bound for San Francisco. The Boeing 757, similar to this one, had 45 passengers and crew on board. No survivors were found. Evidence points to a terrorist strike that may have been coordinated with the attacks on New York and Washington. A passenger on board the United Jetliner made an emergency 911 cellular telephone call to a Pennsylvania emergency center moments before the crash. We are being hijacked, the passenger said. We are being hijacked. Authorities speculated a gunman may have attempted to commandeer the aircraft to fly it to the presidential retreat in Camp David, Maryland. Instead, the plane crashed in the Pennsylvania countryside. When they come down over top of me, I seen it go ahead and dive straight into the ground down here. Pennsylvania's governor expressed outrage. I'm angry. There's a certain amount of rage. There's nausea because of the horror, the terror. Little remains of United Airlines Flight 93, the largest piece of wreckage said to be no more than a meter square. What investigators are now searching for are the two black boxes the voice cockpit recorder and the flight data recorder. They're also listening to a telephone recording of that 911 emergency telephone call. The passenger said to have heard an explosion on board the plane and then saw some white smoke. The question here tonight is, was there a bomb on board that went off? And was this a hijacking that went terribly wrong? Lloyd? Thank you, Peter. CTV's Peter Murphy reporting tonight from Pennsylvania. There was a cruelly efficient twist in today's attacks. The terrorists uh, turned the Americans' own progress and wealth against them. That has left the people of the United States, the citizens of the world's most powerful nation, feeling, well, vulnerable. CTV's Rosemary Thompson joins us with more from Washington. Rosemary? Lloyd, many Americans we spoke to today thought their country was invincible. They don't believe that anymore. Can't work. Okay. In Washington, a woman is embraced on the sidewalk. Her sister in New York City works at the World Trade Center. They can't get through to New York to see if she was at work today or not, so...